Australian Nationality Law, Wikipedia Article Audio Australian Nationality Law determines who is and who is not an Australian citizen. The status of Australian nationality or Australian citizenship was created by the Nationality and Citizenship Act 1948, which came into force on January 26, 1949. The 1948 Act was amended many times, notably in 1973, 1984, 1986, and 2002. It has been replaced by the Australian Citizenship Act 2007, commencing on July 1, 2007. On December 13, 1973, Australia acceded to the 1961 Convention on the Reduction of Statelessness and to the Convention Relating to the Status of Refugees. History of Australian Citizenship Nationality Law Changes Australian Citizenship Law is administered by the Department of Immigration and Border Protection which can issue certificates of citizenship on naturalisation or on request provide other proof or evidence of Australian citizenship. Australian passports are issued to Australian citizens by the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade. In Australia, the terms nationality and citizenship can be used interchangeably, but the term citizenship is more commonly used, while nationality is most often used in official documents and forms. In general, a person may acquire citizenship automatically through birth in Australia or through Australian descent, or by application after a period of residence in Australia. The process of acquiring citizenship by application is referred to as naturalisation. Until the passing in Australia of the Nationality Act 1920, Australia's nationality law, like that of other Commonwealth countries, was governed by the English common law concept of a British subject. The idea that there was such a thing as an Australian nationality as distinct from a British one was considered by the High Court of Australia in 1906 to be a novel idea to which it was not disposed to give any countenance. The British Nationality and Status of Aliens Act 1914 codified the common law rules. Australia followed with the passing of the Nationality Act 1920 which codified the concept of a British subject in Australia, effective from January 1, 1921. In general, the principles of the 1920 Act and subsequent amendments followed United Kingdom legislation, although there were some differences that could lead to a person being a British subject solely under Australian law. The 1948 Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting decided to make major changes in nationality laws throughout the Commonwealth, following Canada's decision to enact its Canadian Citizenship Law, effective January 1, 1947. Until then all Commonwealth countries, with the exception of the Irish Free State, had a single nationality status of British subject. It was decided at that conference that the United Kingdom and the self-governing dominions would each adopt a separate national citizenship, while retaining the common status of British subject. The Nationality and Citizenship Act 1948, which came into force on January 26, 1949, gave effect to that arrangement and created the concept of Australian nationality while continuing to be British subjects. However, the status of other British subjects in Australia differed from the status of those who were not British subjects. Aborigines became Australian citizens under the 1948 Act in the same way as other Australians. The same applied to Torres Strait Islanders and the indigenous population of the territory of Papua. The relationship between Australian citizenship and a citizen of the British Empire or Commonwealth continued to evolve. In 1986, 
the Australia Act 1986 severed almost all of the last remaining constitutional links between the United Kingdom and Australia. Subsequently, in 1988, for the first time, the High Court ruled that anyone who was not an Australian citizen, whether or not a subject of the monarch of the United Kingdom, was an alien. Rights and Duties the 1948 Act was amended many times, notably in 1958, 1973, 1984, 1986, and 2002. In 1973 the 1948 Act was renamed the Australian Citizenship Act 1948. On March 15, 2007, the Australian Citizenship Act 2007 received royal assent and replaced the 1948 Act, commencing on July 1, 2007. The principal milestones in the development of Australian nationality law have been Rights Australian citizens enjoy the following rights. The following duties are expected of Australian citizens. A distinct Australian nationality or citizenship was created on January 26, 1949. Persons who were British subjects on that date would continue to have that status but could in addition apply to acquire the new Australian citizenship if they were. Duties a person could now acquire Australian citizenship even if they also held or obtained the nationality of another Commonwealth country, or if they also held foreign citizenship. Acquisition of Australian Citizenship January 26, 1949 The term British subject had a particular meaning in Australian nationality law. The term encompassed all citizens of countries included in the list contained in the Nationality and Citizenship Act 1948. The list of countries was based on, but was not identical with, those countries which were members of the Commonwealth. The list was amended from time to time as various former colonies became independent countries but the list in the Act was not necessarily up to date as far as to constitute exactly a list of countries in the Commonwealth at any given time. This definition of British subject meant that, for the purposes of Australian nationality law, citizens of countries which had become republics, such as India, were classified as British subjects. Status of British Subjects the Australian Citizenship Act 1984 removed the status of British subject from Australian citizenship law, with effect from November 22, 1984, and British subjects who have not acquired Australian citizenship came to be treated as non-citizen permanent residents. A person born in Australia before January 25, 1949 was automatically a British subject, based on the Jus Soli principle, regardless of the status of their parents, children born to visitors or foreigners also acquired citizenship by birth. Such persons need to apply for Australian citizenship. Otherwise since August 20, 1986 they have the status of permanent resident. Citizenship by birth A person born in Australia between January 26, 1949 and August 19, 1986, automatically acquired Australian citizenship. Until November 21, 1984. Such a person had the status of Australian citizen and British subject, but after that date the status of British subject ceased to exist in Australia. The Use Soli principle was abolished from August 20, 1986, with persons born after that date acquiring Australian citizenship by birth only if a descendant of at least one parent who was an Australian citizen or permanent resident at the time of birth. 
the definition of parenthood was tested in H.V. Minister for Immigration and Citizenship, where it was held that parenthood does not necessarily require it to be of a biological nature. A child born in Australia and who lives in Australia automatically acquires Australian citizenship on his or her 10th birthday, if the child has not been granted or otherwise acquired Australian citizenship in the meantime. This occurs automatically, and applies irrespective of the immigration status of the child or his slash her parents. Children born in Australia whose parents are stateless and not entitled to any other country's citizenship may in some circumstances apply for and be granted Australian citizenship. A person born outside Australia to an Australian citizen parent can acquire Australian citizenship in the following ways. Citizenship by descent Australian citizenship by descent is not conferred at birth and a child born outside Australia to an Australian parent must apply for citizenship. If aged 18 or over, an applicant for Australian citizenship by descent must be of good character. Children of former Australian citizens Where an Australian parent has lost Australian citizenship before the birth of a child, the child is not eligible for Australian citizenship by descent. However, such a child is eligible for a special conferral of Australian citizenship under Section 21 of the 2007 Act if the Australian citizen parent lost Australian citizenship under Section 17 of the 1948 Act prior to the child's birth. Section 17 concerned automatic loss of Australian citizenship upon naturalization in another country as an adult before April 4, 2002. Children of former Australian citizens who lost their Australian citizenship under Section 18, Section 20, or Section 23 do not benefit from this concession. 1920 Nationality Act 1920 codified the concept of a British subject, as defined under Australian law, effective January 1, 1921, 1948, Nationality and Citizenship Act 1948 created the concept of Australian citizenship, and came into force on January 26, 1949. Australian citizens continued to also be British subjects, 1958, on October 8, 1958, provisions which caused some naturalised Australians resident outside Australia and New Guinea for seven years to lose Australian citizenship were repealed, 1973, significant changes to the law implemented by the Whitlam Labor government mostly effective on December 1, 1973, distinction between migrants from Commonwealth and other countries abolished. The previous residence requirements of one year and five years to become Australian citizens replaced by a common residence period of three years, but with a six-month transition period, age of majority for citizenship purposes reduced from 21 to 18. The 1948 Act was renamed the Australian Citizenship Act 1948. There is no age limit and those over 18 are eligible to apply. Naturalisation is the process by which one undertakes allegiance to a new sovereign and, often enough, sheds allegiance to another sovereign. Between January 26, 1949 and November 30, 1973, British subjects were able to apply for registration as an Australian citizen after one year's residence in Australia as an immigrant, and there was no requirement to attend a citizenship ceremony. Non-British subjects were required to apply for naturalisation, which had stricter requirements, including a five-year residency. They were required to attend a citizenship ceremony and swear an oath of allegiance to the Crown. From 1966 they were also obliged to renounce all other allegiance. 
entitlement to an Australian passport and to Australian consulate assistance overseas, entitlement to re-enter Australia at any time without any immigration restrictions, immunity from deportation, entitlement to register overseas-born children as Australian citizens by descent, entitlement to seek employment by the federal government, or in the Australian Defence Force, entitlement to vote, entitlement to stand for public office, the right to permanently reside in Australia, i.e. to live and work in Australia, and entitlements to public services such as subsidised education, health services and social security. The Australian Citizenship Act 1973 ended the preferential treatment for British subjects from December 1, 1973. From that date, the same criteria for naturalisation applied to all applicants for citizenship by naturalisation, though the special status of British subject was retained. Also from that date the age of majority for citizenship matters was reduced to 18 years, so that they could apply for citizenship in their own right. The common residence requirement of three years was reduced to two years from November 22, 1984. The status of British subject was removed from Australian citizenship law, with effect on May 1, 1987. Citizenship by naturalisation Loss of Australian citizenship Adult Australian citizens acquiring another citizenship Loss of citizenship children People who became permanent residents from July 1, 2007 must have been lawfully resident in Australia for four years before applying for naturalisation. The lawfully resident test could be satisfied by a student visa or tourist visa or 457 visa, but the applicant must obey the law, pay tax, defend Australia should the need arise, enroll to vote, and vote at all elections and referenda, serve on a jury, if called upon. Children aged under 18 can be included in the application of a responsible parent. The standard residence requirements do not apply to such children. There are some exceptions to the standard requirements, including those who were present in Australia as permanent residents before July 1, 2007 remain subject to the previous residence requirement on any application for naturalisation made before July 1, 2010 they must. In general, applicants aged 16 or over must attend a citizenship ceremony and make a pledge of commitment, except for Born or naturalised in Australia, born in New Guinea, born overseas to an Australian father provided they had entered Australia with permanent entry permits on or before January 26, 1949, ordinarily resident in Australia for the five years preceding January 26, 1949. Women who were married to Australian men and had entered Australia with permanent entry permits before January 26, 1949. From October 1, 2007, most applicants for naturalisation aged between 18 and 60 must pass the Australian Citizenship Test, which focuses on Australia's values, history and traditional and national symbols. Prior to April 4, 2002, many Australian citizens lost Australian citizenship through acquiring another citizenship, or being the child of a parent who did so. From this date onwards, the scope to lose Australian citizenship is more limited. Between January 26, 1949 and April 3, 2002, an adult Australian generally lost Australian citizenship automatically upon acquisition of another citizenship by a voluntary and formal act, with the following rules. Naturalised Australian Citizens 
Section 17 of the 1948 Act was repealed with effect from April 4, 2002. Although the repeal was not retroactive, since July 1, 2007 former Australian citizens who lost citizenship because of the section are generally able to apply for resumption of Australian citizenship. Children did not lose Australian citizenship by virtue of their own actions, but could lose Australian citizenship if a parent lost Australian citizenship. Loss of Australian citizenship occurred under Section 23 of the 1948 Act. Even after the repeal of Section 17 of the Act in 2002, Section 23 was left in place. It remains possible for an Australian child to lose Australian citizenship this way. However, since the repeal of Section 17, this is much less common and in general only applies where a parent is deprived of Australian citizenship, or renounces Australian citizenship under Section 18 of the Act. Australian Citizens Connected with Burma Service in the Armed Forces of an Enemy Country Deprivation of Australian Citizenship Under the Australian Citizenship Act 2007, in force from July 1, 2007, an Australian child no longer automatically loses Australian citizenship based on a parent's actions. However the Minister for Immigration and Citizenship has the right to deprive a child of Australian citizenship in these circumstances on a discretionary basis. Between January 26, 1956 and October 7, 1958, a naturalised Australian citizen lost Australian citizenship if resident outside Australia or New Guinea for a continuous period of seven years without registering annually a declaration of intent to retain Australian citizenship. This occurred by virtue of Section 20 of the Nationality and Citizenship Act 1948 which was repealed on October 8, 1958. The provision had the potential to create stateless persons. Since July 1, 2007, persons who lost Australian citizenship because of the provision may apply to resume Australian citizenship subject only to being of good character. Burma became independent outside the Crown's dominions on January 4, 1948. In the Burma Independence Act 1948 the United Kingdom legislated to remove British subject status on that date from such persons who were domiciled in the United Kingdom or His Majesty's dependencies were given two years to elect to remain British. Ex-Citizen Visa Australian legislation was not updated at the time and hence the common law applied. British subjects connected with Burma lost British subject status under Australian law only if resident in Burma. As a result, some British subjects connected with Burma acquired Australian citizenship on January 26, 1949 if resident in Australia for five years at that point. On July 29, 1950 the Australian Parliament passed the Nationality and Citizenship Act 1950 which removed the discrepancy between Australian and British law on the status of persons connected with Burma. As a result of the Act, Australian citizenship was lost on July 29, 1950 by persons who had had British nationality removed from them under the UK legislation in 1948, and persons descended from or married to such persons. Such persons were given until July 29, 1952 to register a declaration of intention to remain a British subject. If such a declaration was registered, the person was deemed never to have lost Australian citizenship. Section 19 of the 1948 Act stated, An Australian citizen who, under the law of a foreign country, 
is a national or citizen of that country and serves in the armed forces of a country at war with Australia shall, upon commencing so to serve, cease to be an Australian citizen. Despite being involved in a number of armed conflicts since 1949, Australia has not declared a formal state of war on another sovereign nation in that period, and hence Section 19 has not operated up to now. It has been reenacted as Section 35 of the 2007 Act. A naturalised Australian citizen may be deprived of Australian citizenship under Section 34 of the 2007 Act in the following circumstances. A person who ceases to be an Australian citizen while physically inside the migration zone of Australia automatically receives an ex-citizen visa under Section 35 of the Migration Act 1958. Since July 1, 2007, a former Australian citizen can resume Australian citizenship if Resumption of Australian Citizenship Citizenship by Adoption Children born to former Australian citizens after loss of the parent's citizenship, and before the parent resumed citizenship, may be considered for a grant of Australian citizenship. There is no requirement for the parent to resume citizenship. This policy was put in place by Ministerial Policy on October 13, 2003 for children under 18 and extended in the 2007 Act to those aged 18 or over. Some former Australian citizens may qualify for a resident return visa to return to Australia as permanent residents. After 12 months as a permanent resident in Australia, it is normally possible for a former Australian citizen to apply for Australian citizenship. Visa Requirements Australian citizenship is acquired automatically on adoption in the following circumstances. Dual Citizenship New Zealand Citizens Papua New Guinea Australian citizenship by descent for persons born in Papua. Pledge of commitment. Evidence of Australian citizenship. Applying for a job in Australia. Applying for social security benefits. Applying for a passport. Certificate of Australian citizenship. Certificate of Evidence of Australian Citizenship Photo Identity Australians and British Nationality Commonwealth Citizenship In all other circumstances an application for grant of Australian citizenship must be made for the child. On May 8, 2005 the Minister for Citizenship announced a policy change to require all child applicants for grant of Australian citizenship by adoption to hold an adoption visa, or other permanent visa. However, it does not appear that there is any requirement for the child to be physically resident in Australia. The Australian Citizenship Act 2007 additionally allows for simplified registration of a person as an Australian citizen where that person was adopted overseas in accordance with the Hague Adoption Convention. An Australian passport does not, in itself, entitle the holder to enter another country. To enter another country, the traveller must comply with the visa and entry requirements of the other countries to be visited, which vary from country to country and may apply specifically to a particular passport type, the traveller's nationality, criminal history, or many other factors. According to the 2016 Visa Restrictions Index, Australian passport holders can visit 169 countries without a visa or by being issued a visa on arrival. With effect from April 4, 2002, there are no restrictions on Australians holding the citizenship of another country. 
Prior to April 4, 2002, it was still possible for Australians in some circumstances to hold dual citizenship, including Holding a foreign passport does not in itself cause loss of Australian citizenship. However, all Australian citizens are required to use an Australian passport when entering and leaving Australia. This provision is intended to prevent immigration-related delays while a traveller's status is confirmed, as an Australian citizen cannot be granted a visa to enter Australia. However, Australian citizens have never been prosecuted simply for travelling on the wrong passport, provided all other immigration requirements are satisfied. Australians with compelling reasons can apply for an Australian declaratory visa for their foreign passport, allowing them to use it for travel to and from Australia. Holding dual nationality continues to be a bar to being elected to the Australian Parliament. In the 2017 Australian parliamentary eligibility crisis, several members of parliament were found to have been ineligible for election owing to their being dual citizens, and others are possibly ineligible. New Zealanders were included in the definition of British subject in the 1948 Act and hence many New Zealanders resident in Australia acquired Australian citizenship in 1949 when this was introduced. There was no bar on New Zealanders automatically acquiring Australian citizenship as well as New Zealand citizenship under the equivalent New Zealand legislation. The facilities to become an Australian citizen by registration or naturalisation have been open to New Zealanders in Australia since 1949. However, most New Zealand citizens arriving since February 2001 are required to apply for and obtain Australian permanent resident status before becoming eligible for Australian citizenship. Children born to New Zealanders in Australia have generally been Australian citizens by birth. The exceptions are Those children born to New Zealand parents in Australia automatically acquire Australian citizenship on their 10th birthday if ordinarily resident in Australia until age 10, if they have not already acquired Australian citizenship by birth or naturalisation. Prior to 1975, what is now Papua New Guinea was divided into two legal entities under common Australian administration. The territory of Papua was an external territory of Australia itself, while the territory of New Guinea was never an Australian territory in a legal sense, but rather a trust territory under Australian administration. As a result, those born or naturalised in territory of Papua acquired Australian citizenship on the same basis as any other part of Australia. However, those of indigenous descent were not automatically entitled to reside in the rest of Australia, despite holding Australian citizenship. It was possible in some circumstances for such persons to apply for and be granted a right of residence in mainland Australia. Persons connected with Territory of New Guinea were Australian protected persons rather than Australian citizens and for nationality purposes the territory was considered not to be part of Australia. Papua New Guinea became independent on September 16, 1975. Australian citizens connected with the territory of Papua lost Australian citizenship on that date if they became citizens of Papua New Guinea. PNG citizenship was generally conferred only on those born in PNG who had at least two grandparents of indigenous descent, and Persons of non-Indigenous descent who acquired Australian citizenship by connection with PNG before independence generally still retain it. Under the Australian Citizenship Act, only a person born outside Australia is eligible to apply for Australian citizenship by descent. 
This has caused an anomaly in that former Australian citizens born in the former territory of Papua before independence, and who lost Australian citizenship on independence in 1975, are unable to recover it through this route even if they have a parent born in mainland Australia. This has been the subject of litigation in the Administrative Appeals Tribunal and the Federal Court of Australia, which have ruled that the definition of Australia includes the former territory of Papua prior to independence. This rules out the possibility of Australian citizenship by descent for a person born in Papua. However, Section 21 of the Australian Citizenship Act 2007 allows certain persons born before independence in Papua to be granted Australian citizenship, where such a person has a parent born in Australia. The wording of the Oath of Allegiance taken by newly naturalising Australian citizens has changed over time. In 1973 the oath's wording was Australia, however, never required new citizens to formally renounce their former citizenship under the law of that country. An equivalent wording was available in the form of a non-religious affirmation for those who preferred. In 1986 the wording was changed to. In 1994 the oath was replaced with a pledge of commitment to Australia. All new citizens have the choice of making the pledge with or without the words under God. There are cases where citizens need to show documentary evidence of their citizenship. Employers are required to check working rights when providing a job, so an Australian citizen needs to show evidence of their citizenship. According to the Department of Immigration and Border Protection this is either a valid Australian passport or simply a birth certificate. Photo identity is also required. Some employers, especially the Government and Human Services Victoria have adopted more stringent requirements similar to the passport requirement below. Centrelink or Medicare may require proof of citizenship when applying for benefits under their programs especially the first time. Generally an Australian passport or simply a birth certificate along with photo identity will suffice, or for newborns, a newborn child declaration issued by the hospital. According to the Australian Passport Office, the following documents normally constitute evidence of Australian citizenship. Photo identity is generally required when applying for a passport. A certificate of Australian citizenship is generally issued once only to naturalised citizens at a citizenship ceremony. It is a recognised identity document. It is A4 in size, has the full name and date of birth of the holder, has a number on the front and back, and is signed by the Minister for Immigration and Border Protection or Responsible Minister at the time of issuance, and is dated the date of the ceremony. Australian citizens who do not have a citizenship certificate, have lost their original certificate, or wish to have a single document proving their citizenship may apply for a Certificate of Evidence of Australian Citizenship. Children born overseas, with one parent born overseas, may apply for an Australian Citizenship by Descent Extract document. Children naturalised as part of a parent's application for Australian citizenship before July 1, 2002 did not receive individual citizenship certificates. Instead, their details were included on the reverse of their parents' certificate. Such children can be issued with individual certificates of evidence of Australian citizenship. As citizenship documentation does not generally have a photo, in many cases separate photo identity is required to associate the citizenship documentation to the individual presenting. For this reason the Australian passport provides a convenient document for proving both citizenship and photo identity in one document. 
when Australia created Australian citizenship on January 26, 1949, not all British subjects connected with Australia became Australian citizens on that date. The most notable exceptions were where the child or woman had not entered Australia with a permanent entry permit before January 26, 1949. Under the terms of Section 12 of the British Nationality Act 1948, Persons acquiring CUKC would have retained it upon a later acquisition of Australian citizenship. However they would only be British citizens today if they had obtained a right of abode in the UK under the terms of the Immigration Act 1971, such as by having a UK-born grandparent. Otherwise they would be British overseas citizens. British subjects without citizenship would have retained that status only if they did not acquire a Commonwealth nationality before 1983, or any citizenship from 1983 or later. British overseas citizens and British subjects may register as British citizens if they have no other nationality, but otherwise do not have an automatic right to live in the United Kingdom. Under United Kingdom law, Australians are Commonwealth citizens and hence are entitled to certain rights in the UK. Similar rights accrue in some other Commonwealth jurisdictions. Under the Trans-Tasman Travel Arrangement, Australian citizens are automatically granted a New Zealand residence class visa on arrival in New Zealand, provided they the visa entitles Australian citizens to live, work and study in New Zealand indefinitely, and expires once the Australian citizen leaves New Zealand. Most non-citizens travelling to Australia must obtain a visa prior to travel. The only exceptions to this rule are members of the British royal family, who do not require visas to enter Australia and holders of New Zealand passports and citizenships, who may apply for special category visas on arrival according to the Trans-Tasman Travel Arrangement. Australia means Australia together with its territories. British subject means a person connected with a Commonwealth country. The phrase was used in Australian law until April 30, 1987. See British subject for a more general description of the use of the term. Two open border with Skengen area. Three Russia is a transcontinental country in Eastern Europe and Northern Asia. The vast majority of its population lives in European Russia, therefore Russia as a whole is included as a European country here. 4. Turkey is a transcontinental country in the Middle East and Southeast Europe. Has a small part of its territory in Southeast Europe called Turkish Thrace. 5. Azerbaijan and Georgia are transcontinental countries. Both have a small part of their territories in the European part of the Caucasus. 6. Kazakhstan is a transcontinental country has a small part of its territories located west of the Urals in Eastern Europe. 7. Armenia and Cyprus are entirely in Southwest Asia but having socio-political connections with Europe. 8. Egypt is a transcontinental country in North Africa and the Middle East. Has a small part of its territory in the Middle East called Sinai Peninsula. New Zealand Residency Citizenship, Visas, and Travel Definitions British subjects born outside Australia before January 26, 1949 with an Australian father became Australian citizens automatically upon entering Australia with a permanent visa. A person born outside Australia or New Guinea before January 26, 1949 may be registered as an Australian citizen provided, that person has a parent born or naturalised in Australia or New Guinea, and, 
the parent became an Australian citizen on January 26, 1949. Have been in Australia for 12 months as a permanent resident, have had absences from Australia of no more than 12 months in the previous four years, including no more than three months in the 12 months before applying, have not been unlawfully in Australia at any time in the four years preceding application, understand the responsibilities and privileges of Australian citizenship, be able to speak and understand basic English, understand the nature of the application, and, intend to reside in Australia or to maintain a close and continuing association with Australia. Children of former Australian citizens, Australian Defence Force veterans, former Australian citizens and those born in Australia, children adopted by Australian citizens, spouses and interdependent partners of Australian citizens, persons born in Papua before independence in 1975, or, persons born in Australia who are stateless. 9. Partially recognised Have been present in Australia as a permanent resident for a total of two years in the five years before application, have been present in Australia for a total of 12 months in the two years before application. Children of former Australian citizens granted citizenship under Section 21 of the Act. Persons born in Papua before independence granted citizenship under Section 21 of the Act. Stateless persons born in Australia and granted citizenship under Section 21 of the Act. Or, persons with a permanent or enduring physical or mental incapacity that means the person is not capable of understanding the nature of the application, or demonstrating a basic knowledge of English, or demonstrating an adequate Knowledge of the Responsibilities and Privileges of Australian Citizenship The age of majority in this respect was 21 until November 30, 1973, and 18 thereafter, before November 22, 1984, Australian citizenship was not lost if the acquisition of another citizenship took place while the person was inside Australia. From November 22, 1984, the incidental acquisition of another citizenship as the result of another activity did not cause loss of Australian citizenship. Loss of Australian citizenship still occurred even if no oath of allegiance was taken to the other country. Loss of Australian citizenship occurred even if the Queen was also head of state of the other country. It was not relevant whether the acquisition of another citizenship was reported to the Australian authorities. If the child did not have any other citizenship, it did not lose Australian citizenship. Before November 22, 1984 there was only one parent for citizenship purposes, usually the father. Loss of Australian citizenship by the other parent did not affect the child's status. From November 22, 1984 a loss of Australian citizenship by either parent could affect the child's citizenship. However a child would not lose Australian citizenship in this circumstance if one parent remained an Australian citizen. Any person born in Burma whose father or paternal grandfather was born in Burma and neither father nor paternal grandfather born in a British territory or British protectorate, and, women married to men who lost British subject status by virtue of the above provision. Conviction for certain offences against the Australian Citizenship Act 1948 or the Migration Act 1958. These mainly involve fraud in the person's citizenship or migration application, where the person receives a prison sentence of 12 months or more for an offence committed before the person's application for Australian citizenship was approved. Deprivation of citizenship cannot occur for this reason if the person has no other citizenship, 
in December 2015 the Australian Citizenship Act 2007 was amended by the Australian Citizenship Amendment Act 2015 which introduced three mechanisms by which citizenship may be forfeited, renunciation by conduct, an expanded S35 to cover service in a declared terrorist organisation, and a new power for the minister to cancel citizenship after a person is convicted of one of a range of offences, most of which are connected to terrorism or treason, and the minister is satisfied of certain public interest criteria. This visa ceases to have effect as soon as the person leaves Australia. Should the former citizen wish to return as a resident, a resident return visa or other permanent visa is required, an ex-citizen visa may be cancelled on character grounds and the former citizen removed from Australia. This is likely where citizenship has been revoked under Section 21 of the Act. The former citizen lost Australian citizenship automatically under Section 17, 20 or 23 of the 1948 Act subject only to being of good character. The former citizen renounced Australian citizenship, subject to an additional requirement that the renunciation must have been to acquire or retain another nationality, or to avoid hardship or disadvantage. The adoption takes place in Australia on or after November 22, 1984. The child is a permanent resident, and at least one adoptive parent is an Australian citizen. Those born in Australia who automatically acquired another citizenship at birth, migrants naturalising in Australia, provided their former country did not revoke their citizenship, children born overseas to Australian parents who automatically acquired the citizenship of their country of birth as well as Australian citizenship by descent. Those born between August 20, 1986 and August 31, 1994. This is due to a technicality in the 1986 legislation which limited the acquisition of Australian citizenship to children of Australian citizens and permanent residents, which was not corrected until 1994, those born on or after February 27, 2001. Neither of the above restrictions affect children where one parent was an Australian citizen or permanent resident at the time of birth. Despite the above, if a child is born in Australia to two parents who are New Zealand citizens by descent, the child is entitled to Australian citizenship. This is because under New Zealand nationality law, New Zealand citizens by descent cannot pass on New Zealand citizenship by descent, therefore rendering the child stateless. Special rules apply to cases where the New Zealand parent is a diplomat, official guest, visiting forces personnel, or has entered Australia on the passport of another country. In the case of Papua, had not acquired a right of permanent residence in mainland Australia or the citizenship of any other country, in the case of New Guinea, had not acquired Australian or any other citizenship. A valid Australian passport, an Australian passport that expired less than three years ago, was issued when over 16, and shows the correct current name, sex, date of birth and place of birth. An Australian passport issued on or after January 1, 2000, if born in Australia on or after August 20, 1986, a birth certificate issued by or on behalf of an Australian state or territory, a birth certificate issued by or on behalf of an Australian state or territory with evidence of a parent being an Australian citizen or permanent resident at the time of birth being one parent's full birth certificate, showing the parent was born in Australia before August 20, 1986, or, one parent's Australian passport issued on or after August 20, 1986 that was valid for at least two years at the time of birth, or, 
one parent's Australian citizenship certificate detailing their acquisition of citizenship before birth, or, according to other sources, one parent's full birth certificate. Showing the parent was born in Australia on or after August 20, 1986, and one of their parents' full birth certificate, showing the applicant's grandparent was born in Australia before August 20, 1986. Children born outside Australia to Australian fathers, and, women married to Australian men. Such persons acquired citizenship of the UK and colonies on January 26, 1949 on the basis of being British subjects connected with Australia, if they did not have citizenship of, or connections with, another Commonwealth country or Ireland, where a person had connections with another Commonwealth country that had not introduced a citizenship law as of January 26, 1949, they acquired citizenship of the UK and colonies on the date the other country introduced a citizenship law if they did not become a citizen of that country at the time, if they had not acquired Australian citizenship by that point. A complication arises if the person had a connection with India or Pakistan and such a person may have remained a British subject without citizenship if he did not acquire Indian or Pakistani citizenship, or the citizenship of any other Commonwealth country or Ireland. Access to the UK Youth Mobility Visa, if between 1830, for those with a UK-born grandparent, Access to the UK Ancestry Entry Clearance, for those born before 1983 who have a UK-born mother or are women who were married before January 1, 1983 to a man with the right of abode in the UK, the right of abode, for those living the UK, the right to vote and stand for public office there. Present a valid Australian passport or a foreign passport with an Australian citizen endorsement, correctly complete a New Zealand passenger arrival card, are of good character. Australian citizens who have ever been imprisoned for five years or more, been imprisoned in the past ten years for one year or more, or have been deported or removed from any country, are not permitted to enter New Zealand. Norfolk Island is included from July 1, 2016, Christmas Island is included from October 1, 1958 and the Cocos Islands from November 23, 1955. These are former United Kingdom territories transferred to Australia, Papua ceased to be an Australian territory on September 16, 1975. Category